Hello, members of the body. It's your boy KP coming back with another video. First off, all praise and credit to our King Yeshua. Um, it is my pleasure, it is my privilege, it is my calling to represent him and deliver the messages that he gives me. Um, th this message is going to be called, Are You Following the Rules or Are You Following the Ruler? Okay, let's get into it. What are the rules? I'm going to start this off with a scripture. If you look up um, Luke 16, 16, this is Jesus talking, and he says, like for the law to um he said the for the law and the prophets were up until john since then the kingdom is being preached so he's pretty much telling you like the law and the prophets in the old testament is over with and he's coming to bring a new game and that's why he's here um Let's I want to go over this. Let's 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 look at at the Old Testament and what it took for the presence of God to show up. So first off, God is holy. He's pure light and cannot be in the presence of any evil. If there's any evil or sin around, it's just going to burn up and get destroyed in his presence. So that's why he gave uh, Moses the initial law that allowed him to follow some rules. Um, it allowed him to get a scapegoat to transfer the sin over so the presence of God could show up to the Ark of the Covenant. So these laws were to cleanse, you know, Moses and Aaron of sins, and then they would, you know, kill an animal because the, the life force is in the blood. So you kill, you kill the animal, you transfer the sins over, and that's allowed the presence of God to show up when one of his chosen prophets were clean from all sin and be in the presence of God. Therefore, they could talk, and then the prophet could come back, deliver message to the masses of, of what God wanted them to do. So, you know, this was the practice of the Old Testament. And I want to, you know, just look, just look at the words testament. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. Testament means a statement of belief. So there is an Old Testament and a New Testament. An old statement of beliefs and a new statement of beliefs. All right. I hope you're with me. So if you, if you, if you think about this, when, when Jesus came and man, it's so beautiful. One of the parables, there's like one parable I couldn't grasp what it mean and I prayed on it and, and God gave me like this message and the explanation of the, of the parable all wrapped in one. Um, but so the Old Testament and the New, Pe New Testament. And I, I want to go back to another story. You remember when um, you, you, can, uh, you, you can also look at like when Jesus was walking as he, as he began to preach. He was grabbing people. He grabbed, he grabbed a Peter named Simon and James, and he was like, look, leave that stuff. Come with me, and I'm going to make you fishers of men. So this was the parable I couldn't get. It was called, you don't put, you don't put new wine into old wineskins unless they both, unless they, they both are lost. You put new wine into new wineskins, and they're both preserved. So what, he is, what Jesus is trying to tell us is like, man, the law and the prophets up until John, that stuff is over with, right? He's like, that's over with. That's why Jesus was grabbing new people. He didn't go after the Sadducees and the Pharisees and get them and give them the new game. They were under the law and what the prophets had said. So they were old. So what Jesus was doing is he was grabbing some new vessels that wasn't contaminated with the Old Testament. He wasn't going to put new wine into the old vessels because they both would be lost. So he wasn't going to take the new doctrine, which is the kingdom, and put it in the Sadducees and the Pharisees because it was just going to be lost. That's why he took new people. That's why he was traveling along, just grabbing people going, hey, come with me. I'm going to make you fishers. Drop that stuff. Come with me. Um, man, it, it's, 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 it's really a beautiful thing. Um, oh my God. Like it's amazing the way the game is laid out. There's nothing new other than the sun. He's just doing it a different way. So look at, look at Matthew uh, 417. So the very first thing Jesus ever preached was um, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
So he was preaching the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. That's all it's about. We are not under the law. We're not under the old prophets. Those, you know, when Jesus came, it was not to destroy the law and for prophets, but to fulfill them. So they were a means to an ends. They are not the ends. And so, and so many times we get caught up with the means. Um, and I am no way in shape or form taking away um, our Savior Jesus Christ dying on the cross, but that is a means as for the new covenant to occur to allow us to, okay, so let me go back. The old covenant, they had to uh, kill an animal, right? You had to kill an animal and that was transferring the sins over, then the presence of God could show up. That That is repeated in the Old Testament. It goes on and on. If you look at the book of Kings where Elijah is goes it's just Elijah he's the last prophet of the Lord and he shows up and you know Jezebel's got 450 prophets worshiping Baal and Elijah's just had enough but God Father God sent him in there was like look man go handle my business let them clowns know so he goes up in there and he's like you know bring them 450 prophets over here like Ahab I'm tired of doing this um and you know they bring them out we're gonna do this once and for all we're gonna get two bulls we're gonna sacrifice fight some build an offer whoever God showed up that is the real true God because y'all need to either worship Baal or you need to worship the living God. So, you know, they, they do that. They both sacrifice them. The 450 prophets are doing all kind of craziness. They, they sacrifice their bull. They put it on the altar. They're going all day trying to call in God, like trying to call in their God, trying to rain down fire on this bull. You know, and the, uh, um, um, Elijah's clowning. I'm like, oh, where's your God? Maybe he's sleeping. You know, so they do this, do this. Make a long story short, it becomes evening time and, and it's Elijah's turn. And he's just raises up his hand. He's like, you know, the God, the God of Abraham and Jacob and, and Israel, if, 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 if you are the true living God, answer by fire. Boom! You know what I mean? It comes out and everybody's like, oh, the God of Israel is the true living God. And then uh, Isaiah's pretty much like, not that quick. And he and he killed all 450 prophets in one cat, right? But that's the but that is what I'm trying to tell you. There's nothing new under the sun. So that's the old law, right? You had prophets, they did ceremonies to be able to come in the presence of God, and then they were able to preach and lead the people. So Jesus comes to change the old law, and he comes to bring a new covenant. A new way of ceremony ceremoniously cleansing and sacrificing so he was the lamb that was totally pure so he came down and he was sacrificed so when you go through a baptism like John was baptizing people in the in the in the river of Jordan so what's taking and that's why John says you know, I come to baptize you with water, um, but after me, there is one more mighty than me that whose shoes I'm not worthy to unlace. He's going to come baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. So the baptism is this is so Jesus is the lamb, that blood that spiritually covers us all. So that's so the presence of God can come. So are you with me? So that is the sacrifice that has been taken from a physical sacrificing of an animal to a one-time sacrifice of God's son, which, which now is a spiritual um, covering of blood that allows the presence of God to come. So remember the Old Testament's twofold, ceremonial cleansing, sacrifice uh, of, of an animal for, 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 uh, for life force, all right? So the New Testament, it's the same game, ceremonial cleansing, which is the baptizing of water, and then the being covered with blood so the presence of God can show up and not kill you, right? So you got the baptism by water and the, and the covering the blood of Jesus. Now, these are both spiritual. They're both spiritual. You know what I mean? So you get, you get, uh, you get baptized with the water and you get covered with the blood, and then the presence of God can come up upon you. Oh man, this this is this is great. So that's so now the covenant he set us up on what the new covenant is. Um like the like these like the uh the prophets before had to be like holy, holy or or if they came in the presence of God, they would just die. And there's and there's plenty of there's plenty of uh 
stories in the Old Testament how somebody accidentally touched the Ark of the Covenant, which were the cherubims were, which were, uh, you know, between um, this world and the mercy seat of God, and they accidentally touched it without being ceremonious and clean, and they would die in the presence of God. So, God is ordaining 144,000 prophets, and that's where we are currently at in this day and age. If you are a true 144,000 and you're a targeted individual and you went through this gang stalking and you've been confronted with the supernatural and demons, what is going on right now, just like the book of Revelation where uh, the one angel comes down and he tells the four angels on the four corners of the earth, do not harm the earth until I've sealed all of God's servants in their forehead. What he is doing I didn't, man, God is amazing. I didn't even realize this is what happened to me. I was spirit, I was baptized in the spirit. I had never read the Bible before in my life. And I was baptized in the spirit and told to go read it. And I, I knew the Bible that I had never read. It was the most amazing thing. So what's going on now? So I was baptized in the spirit. So the 144,000, that angel is sealing God's servants. So that angel was going around and supernaturally covering us with the blood of the lamb. That's why we are having those super, these supernatural experiences of being in the presence of God and getting prophetic messages. And we feel such the, the urge to go out and preach the word to the people. All right. So what's the word to the people? So Jesus came. If you look throughout the New Testament, look throughout the New Testament from the first thing he preached was repent for the kingdom of God is at for the kingdom of heaven is at hand right so it's about the kingdom it's about the kingdom it's about the kingdom Jesus came to bring the kingdom so God's never going to fail you think Jesus came to bring this kingdom and he is going to fail at it it's not going to happen it's not going to happen man so check check this game out man the game is so sweet i'm just watching it unfold and it's truly a blessing man god has blessed me to see these things and to understand these things and now i'm here to tell you right so you know they're asking jesus how should i pray and he's like our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread um and for and forgive us for our debts as we forgive our our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the glory and the, forever and ever amen man so look so many of us are i shouldn't say of us so many people are following the law these churches are teaching the law because you got people that haven't been ordained by the most high god and the holy spirit to teach the gospel and that's where we're at. The gospel is the kingdom. The good news is the kingdom of God has come and the kingdom of God is within you. It's an internal government that we are supposed to manifest out to the external, right? So, so many people are focused. They, they, their focus is completely wrong. And this law and these teachings that are being taught are completely wrong. Um, many people are trying to get to heaven. When your job is to bring heaven to earth, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So after you are, after you are spiritually baptized and you are spiritually covered with the blood of the lamb, God's going to anoint some prophets. And that's what the game is about. It isn't, is it, is it isn't focused on trying to get to heaven. It's the focus on being God's governors to bring his kingdom to earth. That is our job. We're not trying to get there. That kingdom's already straight. He don't need, he doesn't need our service. He doesn't need his servants to create that kingdom. He needs his servants to do his will here on earth as it is in heaven. You know what I mean? Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come you know it's just like when 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 jesus was healing somebody and people were outside and they're like hey man your mom's is out here and he's like he was like well my, who's my mother and, and my brothers and my sisters those that are those that are my mother my brother and my sisters are those that do the will of my father thy will be done thy kingdom come it is our job to bring the kingdom here and the kingdom was within us man we are not under the law 
the kingdom is is being everyone can grab the Holy Spirit through through being covered in the blood of the Lamb. And we are here as his servants to bring his kingdom here, man. That is where God is going to show you the things in your life that he has planned for you. We're too busy trying to do our own thing and be selfish and, and, and try to accomplish what we want on this measly little existence. It took me for, man, it took me 44 years of my life to figure this out, that God has a plan for you. You think you, you think you had a great life or you were working on a great life. It is not going to be until you follow the most high God and what he has called you to do that the mystery of his will is going to be revealed in your soul and you're going to see the plan of how you fit in on bringing his kingdom down to earth as it is in heaven man i hope somebody gets this we are not under the old law we're under the new law and it's a beautiful thing and he's bringing in he's ushering the new era and the 144,000 elect are going to be his elected officials they're going to be his governors on earth who operate for him. We're going to be his inner circle. And it's a beautiful thing to be part of a government, man, to be under the rulership of a king and to be part of a kingdom. Because when you're part of a kingdom, man, there is no law. You can have favor of the king. And that's what it is. That's what in the, in the beginning, the, the word was with God and all there was was the word. And like, that's what people don't get any king it's not a it's not a republic or, or a democracy any king his word is the law and there is a spiritual kingdom where king jesus is the king that's why his word that he speaks is the law and when you speak spiritual things physical things manifest and it's just truly a blessing to be under the covering of the spiritual king of all kings jesus christ man i hope Woo, God, man, he is talking to me right now. Man, I just want to thank you guys for watching my videos. If my videos are helping you, man, it is not me. It is the Holy Spirit working through me. Please hit subscribe. Please hit like. Please hit the notification bell. Share this message with someone that is struggling, that does, that does not know what they're experiencing in these last days. God is pouring his spirit out on all flesh. And those that turn them back, on the most high God, they're going to be left in darkness through the tribulation period. He is fishing for his elect right now. Many are called, few are chosen, man. I, I, I pray that if you feel like you are being called to answer the call and do not hang up the line because God has got something planned special for your life. I thank you, family, for watching. Um, I'm going to be back shortly with more videos, man. You guys stay blessed. I am praying for all of you. You guys continue to pray for me. All praise and credit to due to our King, Jesus, and his kingdom. Because I believe in, his, his, in God's order and the kingdom that he's governing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.